Um, just to say that one of the gentlemen we prayed for and ministered to the Friday before um, was living in a flat on Central Park Road. I went to drop him there and we bought him an oyster. We prayed for him. I prayed for him because he said he needed a house so that he could be receiving his son. He and his um, partner are separated. And he said he cannot bring his son to where he was. So I prayed with him. Um, today I was trying to get him to come to church and I called him and he said he's found a house. He's been given a house. He said, but I have been given a house that is far away, so it's in all the way in Gravesend. But I said, now that I said, now your son can visit you. I said, we'll come and visit you there. And I will. Because I want my house to be big in heaven. <laughs> some of you don't understand what I'm talking about. Some of you see, for some of you, the answers to your prayer is when you um I don't know which movie it was where um, somebody was shown as in irrelevant and they got to the gate of the event to go in and it was the irre irrelevant person that was their ticket to get in. Some of you don't realize that your ticket to enter into a higher level of grace is the people that have been shown by the world. And if you minister to them, because they are close to the heart of the Lord, hallelujah, Jesus loves the lowly. Hallelujah. Let me just give you a, a trade secret. If you want to find Jesus, go and hang around the people he loves the most. And the people he loves the most are the least. Amen the smelly ones, the dysfunctional ones, the lost ones, they are close to his heart. And if you stay close to them, you will collide with the Lord. Amen. He that ministers to the poor lends unto the Lord. So the Lord has given us the ministry of the food bank for a reason. And may the Lord give us the grace as a church to minister to them and to elevate them and bring them into places of blessing and grace that God wants for them. And that would be a reciprocal blessing to you in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Now, we are in a teaching season and I'm trying not to preach. I'm trying to teach. And uh, last Sunday was the first session of prayer school, City Chapel Prayer School. And what did we talk about last Sunday? Can anybody remember? Anybody can remember what? Intercession. And intercession basically was standing in the gap for others. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we said that the word intercession is the word <coughs> paga. And basically, that paga has a soft side and a strong side. It has a loud side and a quiet side. And we found out that intercession starts in the heart of God. It doesn't start from you. Proper prayer and intercession starts in the heart of God. And when you step into God's presence, you pick up some of the things that are on his heart. And they come onto your heart. And that is why some people, they enter into worship and they start weeping. Some people enter into worship and they start shouting. Sometimes you wake up as a person and somebody is laid on your heart and you begin to pray for that person and you begin to, you know, pray against things and bind things and you're wondering, what am I doing? You are interceding. Because 
that person needs you at that point in time. And without going into too much um, repetition of what we talked about last week, um, I just want to s- s- finish off this part of what we talked about last week. So if you can put up, if you can hear me, I'll go at the top. And um, if you can put on the screen, how does it work? The amplified version of Romans 8, 27 and 28. Romans 8, 27 and 28. Many of our children in church need to understand the basics. And that is why some of you young people and children, I want you to listen very carefully as I begin to teach this so that you understand these basics. And the basics are important as well as the revelation on top of the basics. Everybody who has been born again, if you have received Jesus into your life, you have the holy... Hallelujah. You have the what? Holy Spirit. Can you look at your neighbor and ask him or her, do you have the Holy Spirit? Go on, ask, just ask, just ask. Do you have the Holy Spirit? In in fact, I want you to ask the children in particular, do you have the Holy Spirit inside you? Because you you believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit is inside you. And the Holy Spirit inside you is not a child Holy Spirit. There is no youth Holy Spirit. There is no adult Holy Spirit. There is purely the Holy Spirit. That means if a two-year-old lays hand on a person in the Holy Spirit, he or she will get the same result as an adult or as Benihin. Hallelujah. Because it is the same Holy Spirit. Amen. And because we have the Holy Spirit inside us, we need to understand this basic principle. Because intercession starts with God. Somebody say that with me. Intercession starts with God. In other words, intercession starts in heaven. Prayer starts from above. Thank you, Jesus. Prayer does not start from the earth. It starts from where? Above. So can we say that again? Prayer starts from above. Look at your neighbor and pray, preach, preach for me today. Look at your husband, your wife, your friend, or the person sitting next to you and say, do you know prayer starts from above? He who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the what? Holy Spirit. What his intent is because the Spirit intercedes and pleads before what? God. On behalf of the saints, according to and in harmony with God's will. Hallelujah. We are assured and know that God, being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to those who love God and who are called according to his design and his purpose. In other words, Every human being on this planet has a file. Hallelujah. Every one of you has what? A file. And that file has your name on it. He said, I know my thoughts towards you that are good and not evil to bring you to what? An expected end. So, when you begin to pray for a person... When you begin to pray for somebody, if you are in the Holy Spirit, you will plug into their file. Hallelujah. Many parents, okay, let me use this word. Some Nigerian parents want their children to become a doctor. So God, I pray for the right school. Are you with me? Or 
some Nigerian parents want their children to marry another Nigerian from the same tribe. <laughs> Hallelujah. I hope I'm not going to mess anybody up today. <laughs> so you begin to pray for your child in line with your own plan. And you wonder what is happening because you're not having a breakthrough. But when you have the Holy Ghost and you begin to really pray, he begins to prompt you to pray in a particular way. Hallelujah. So you want, you're wanting to pray doctor and the word chef is coming out of your mouth. Chef, I buy chef, I buy chef. What kind of chef? I don't want chef. And you're saying, chef, 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 chef. And so the words that are coming out of your spirit are in line with in a particular way. It means in your child's file, there is chef in it. Amen. Oh my God, hallelujah. Amen. Oh my God. Hey, some mothers, you're praying for the right university for your child. And you're focused on a particular, my child must go to um, university of Greenwich because your house is in Greenwich next to university. And as you are praying, Nottingham is coming out of your spirit. Not what I, I, I know Nottingham in Jesus' name. My child is not going far away. But in the in the file, in that child's file, in a particular season, your child is going to Nottingham. Hello, are you here? Or Belgium. Bell what I bind bell. Anything bare, Brussels, hey, the devil is there. No way. But in the file of your child, there is a season for that child to be in Belgium. Are you here? Oh my God, you don't understand what I'm saying. Some, some mothers are looking at me like, Pastor, don't, don't go there. <laughs> you prep them for Cambridge. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, because... Every individual is different. Look at your neighbor and say, I am different from you. Hallelujah. I am different. My next, next slide, please. Okay, oh, let, me just, let me just. Is this thing working? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Um, you need to understand that the, the Holy Spirit has his own mind. God has his own mind. Hallelujah. God has his own what? Mind. And you cannot, you cannot um, uh, overcome what is in the mind of God. If intercession is partnership with God. Praying, he is already praying and he's given us the privilege to join with him in what he is doing. Hallelujah. God is doing something and he wants to bring you along with what he's doing. And that is why if you pray properly, you will plug into the mind of God and not your own plans. God has his own plans. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Where are we? Are we going back? Are we going up? Am I going up? This looks to be... I'm going up. Okay. Okay. Okay, I've got it now. Thank you, thank you. How does it work? Partnership. Okay. So, prayer starts with what? God. It comes to us. The Holy Spirit helps us to pray back to God. Hallelujah. That is how prayer is. Praise the Lord. And so, what you need to begin to teach your children and begin to teach your families how to pray properly. How to intercede properly. How to wait on God. That is why we are praying and fasting. So we can begin to discern what God is saying. What God is saying. Hallelujah. What God is saying. God prepared a channel by Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you Holy Spirit. Okay. I just put that there just to distract some people. Hallelujah. Tony Stark. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Tony Stark was designed by his father 
to take over his company and the whole company had an agenda for him. Hello? Am I talking? And one day, um, he was in, with the military and he had an accident. They were attacked. Do you remember that film? And he had an incident where he went through a problem with some terrorists and he's in the midst of all of that he found his real purpose. Oh my God, are you here? And Tony Stark is a parable for America. Hello? That you can't go around the world selling weapons because they will have a detrimental effect against you. Oh my God, are you here? And the same weapons he sold to the terrorists were the same weapon that blew him up. And so he had a change of mind that we can't, as a company, Tony Stark Industries cannot be producing weapons to destroy the enemy. We have to change the agenda of our intelligence for something better. Oh my God, are you here? So in other words, sometimes you are on the wrong agenda, Moses. You are a prince of Egypt, but the agenda of God for you is different. Hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. That is why some of you keep bumping into obstacles and wondering what is going on. You need to pray. Tap your neighbor and say, you need to pray. You need to pray so that you can begin to see the purpose of God and the purpose of God can become your purpose in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are not called to live our own lives. We are called to live the life that God has given to us in Jesus' name. In the same way, the Holy Spirit helps us in our what? weaknesses, for we do not know how we should pray. <laughs> Hallelujah. We don't know our own files. Hello? Look at your neighbor and say, have you seen your own file? Some of you may have had a glimpse of your file through a dream, through a prophecy, through a, 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 a vision, through a revelation. Hallelujah. But many times, many people are walking in confusion because they have not yet tapped into the mind of God. Jesus said to his disciples, I am going to be killed. Peter said, I bind that spirit of death in the name of you. You are not going anywhere. And what did Jesus say to Peter? Get behind me what? Satan. Sometimes our thoughts are satanic. <laughs> because they are not in line with the will of God. Yeah, thank you, Holy Spirit. That is why we have to pray, your will be done where? On earth. Some, of, some people, and I declare that will not be your portion in Jesus' name. Some people will get to heaven and Jesus will say to them, God will say to them, you buried your gift. And you're going to say, but I was a doctor. I operated. And God said, did I, did I tell you to become a doctor? The fact that you can do something does not mean that is what you are designed to do. Hello, are you here? Thank you, Jesus. It says, and he who searches the heart knows the mind of it because the Spirit intercedes. The Holy Spirit interceding on the inside of you begins to stare you. The Bible says in, I believe it's um, um, Acts 7, it, says, it, it came to his heart. 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 Something comes to your heart. Something that is contrary to your, your life. And you're wondering, what is this thought? What is this impression? What is this thing? Tap your name and say, you need to pray. 
You need to pray through what is coming from heaven. Because that thing may be the thing that needs to prompt you into the epicenter of your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As many as are led by what the Spirit of God, they are what the sons of God. They are the ones that mature into who they really are. And that will be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Captain America. What am I going to say about? No, I'm not going to say anything about Captain America. Steve Rogers. Hallelujah. From another time. In another generation. Hallelujah. Preserved. Tap your neighbor and say, you're going to be, you're going to be preserved. <laughs> oh, my. Tap your neighbor and say, you're going to be preserved. For the generation you are called to serve. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You have heard it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you what, love your enemies. And what, pray for those who persecute you. One of the ways by which you can practice this power of prayer, this power of paga, is to take a case study of somebody who hates you. <laughs> oh my God, hallelujah. Hello, are you listening to me? Somebody you know that does not like you. And somebody you do not like. Hallelujah. Somebody you don't like. Praise the Lord. Somebody who is out to destroy you. Are you with me? And to begin to pray for them. Hallelujah. I didn't say pray for Thanos because Thanos does not exist. But what I'm, I'm saying that sometimes as you begin to pray for that person, something will change in your heart. The prayer sometimes does not change the person, it changes you. Because as you begin to pray for that person, look, at, let me tell you something. One of the powerful, most powerful currencies of prayer is forgiveness. And you have to practice forgiveness. Hallelujah. Some Christians are the most unforgiving. Can you shake your neighbor and say forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness? No, I, I, they, they didn't hear you. The person in front of you, the person behind you, don't say, don't tell them, forgive your mother-in-law, forgive your relative, <laughs> forgive, forgive, forgive her, forgive him, forgive them. <laughs> Hallelujah. As you begin to paga for them, as you begin to intercede for them, something changes in your heart. Something shifts in your life. Hello. And because God brings you to a place of forgiveness, as your heart softens, the heaven can now forgive you. Hello. Sometimes what we call closed heavens is actually unforgiveness, is offense, is malice. Because, look, let me tell you, in any given church, or in any given family, some people are designed to be a thorn in your side. They are just designed that way. They cannot help themselves. They will irritate you. They will say things. You will give to them, they don't give you back. You will love them, they don't love you back. You will, they, on Christmas Day, you buy presents, they don't, they, 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 even a car, they won't buy for you. Hello, are you here? You go to work, they betray, betray you. They say things behind your back, they gossip behind you. They just do all kinds of things. Hello. Can you shake your neighbor and say, forgive her, forgive him. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When you start to feel a burden or a need to pray for someone, be assured Jesus and the Holy Ghost are already praying for that person. And in, and in making you his partner in prayer, you can affect that life in partnership with Christ according to his design and purpose for that person. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, the word for the Holy Spirit helps. Is, is, is that, is that uh, uh, Greek word, uh, son antilambano, it means to, 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 to gather, to take hold against. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so the Holy Ghost is able to grab a hold of you and say, come and help me move this burden. Come and help me move this boulder. Come and help me clear this way. Hallelujah. And so in the, in the spirit, you are standing with the Holy Spirit and interceding for somebody who does not deserve your prayer. Praise the Lord. Oh my God. Tap your neighbor and say, this is a hard lesson. Why will I pray for her? She does not deserve it. Because when you pray for that person who does not deserve your prayers, God will give you things you do not deserve. <coughs> Hello. Hello. That is how the economy of heaven works. One of the most powerful currencies of heaven is forgiveness. As I was praying for this service, the Lord told me I needed to add this into, the, into it. Praise the Lord. Forgiveness. Look at your neighbor and say forgiveness. Uh, no, I said look at them and say forgiveness. Oh, there's some people here who need to, who need to hear it. Talk, can you just lay your hands gently on their shoulder and say forgiveness. You, me, and him. The Holy Spirit prays for you. Jesus prays for you. The Holy Spirit then enables you to begin to pick things up in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And you begin to pick up things in the spirit realm and you are able to pray through what heaven is saying. This is very essential in prayer. Don't just pray from your own carnal desires what you want. Wait on the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hmm. Let me just move on. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. When I watched Wonder Woman, by the way, there were, there were principles of spiritual warfare involved with the movie. Amen. And the principles of spiritual warfare was in taking out Ares, the god of war. The war ended. <laughs> Hallelujah. There are certain, I'm telling you, the, the god of war for some of you is the god of unforgiveness. Take that thing out and the war will cease. <laughs> Storms will cease in your life. In the name of, let me just move on. Before you say that, Pastor Jay, are you, are you is, this, is this a Marvel DC? Are you promoting, did they, are they paying you? <laughs> the Holy Spirit allows us to eavesdrop. And when he, the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but will speak whatever he hears. Hallelujah. Somebody say, pray in the Holy Ghost. On the prayer line, if you've never ever been on the prayer line, sometimes we just pray in the spirit. We just pray. As we're praying in the spirit, words just come. Hallelujah. This morning, what was the word that came this morning? Does anybody remember? Yeah. Enlargement. Hallelujah. The word enlargement. We just began to just pray the word enlargement. Isaiah 50, 54. Hallelujah. Lengthen and en enlarge the place of your inhabitation. I did not wake up knowing what I was going to pray. We just began to pray in the Holy Spirit. Just, okay, just begin to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Just begin to pray. Hallelujah. Just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Come on, just begin to pray out loud. Children, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. Begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. 
Hallelujah. Just begin to pray in the Holy Spirit. As you pray in the Holy Spirit, sometimes the Holy Spirit will drop words in your spirit, will drop pictures in your spirit, will drop thoughts in your spirit, will drop an image in your spirit. That is what you need to take. That is what you need to pick up and begin to then pray into your situation or for that person in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. One of, the, one of the gifts of the Pentecostals to the church is glossolalia, is the ability to pray in tongues, both privately and publicly. And I want you to train your children how to pray in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I was sharing this with my sons the other day that we need to pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray. As you're praying in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will stir up things in your spirit that you did not even think about. Hallelujah. As you focus your mind, I want you to close your eyes right now. Focus your mind on somebody you hate. Okay, or somebody who hates you. Hallelujah. Focus your mind on somebody you think, maybe it's a teacher at work, at school. And begin to pray for that person. Go on, begin to pray for that person. Let me help you. Say, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray for this person. I bless him or her. I bless him. I bless her. Hallelujah. I pray that your blessings will rest upon them. I pray that you will guide them. I pray that you will help them in whatever situations that they are facing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at me for a minute. As you begin to pray for people, I'm just using people you hate or people who hate you because sometimes that is a focus. You can quickly think about it. This applies to any situation. As you begin to pray and focus on this thing, on this matter, the Holy Spirit will speak what he hears and he will tell you Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have not practiced this before, you need to start practicing it. Everybody here has the ability to hear. Amen. Tap your neighbor and say, you can hear. It's easy. So some of the things, some of the thoughts that, have just, that just brushed through your mind, that you just ignore, that you, you, you didn't realize it was a message, you just thought it was your mind wandering, is actually the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Begin to pray as you, as you focus on a person or a situation. Begin to pray. As you begin to pray, you can worship. You can begin to just put that person on the altar in front of you. Hallelujah. If you're Pentecostal, you can begin to pray in tongues for that person. But whatever you do, be bring that person before the Lord and the Holy Spirit will speak what he hears. He will tell you. He will receive from me what is mine and will tell it what to you. That is how to pray properly for people. That is how you develop your prophetic gift. The eyes and your ears, your spiritual ears and your eyes become sharper and you begin to hear. Hallelujah. That is why we are Christians. That's why we are different from other people. Because we live in two worlds, the natural and the spiritual. And the spiritual world, the, through the Holy Spirit, is able to guide and to share with us things that are in the spiritual realm that are of benefit to us. And bring us into a place of blessing as we catch those things and begin to speak them out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And this morning, as we were praying in tongues, the word of God that came to us was enlargement. Someone say enlargement. Yeah. Hallelujah. We began to pray enlargement and increase. And the word enlargement was the rad rakab. It means to, to, to widen, to broaden, to spread out. Hallelujah. Amen. So begin to just say, in the name of Jesus, I rakab my imaginations. 
my, 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 my accounts, my, my, my life, my relationships, my dreams, in the name of Jesus, I speak enlargement into my life into every area of my existence in the name of Jesus. So progress, progress, progress. Increase, increase, increase. The path of the just shall shine brighter and brighter unto that coming day in the name of Jesus. Say, I shall be fruitful. I shall multiply. I shall increase. I shall prosper. I shall go higher. I shall go further. I shall spread wider. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. These are words. As you pray, as you seek God's face, as you intercede, as you focus on a situation, the Holy Ghost begins to bring words from heaven into your heart and into your life. And as you echo those words, heaven meets the earth. Earth becomes in synchrony with heaven. And there's a dance. And miracles begin to happen. Things begin to change. Coincidences begin to happen because you have prayed. Praise the Lord. Sometimes when you pray and things align like that, coincidences will happen. Somebody will make a phone call. You bump into somebody coincidentally, but because it's because you have prayed. And because you have connected heaven to the earth, the earth has to line up with heaven. You have to receive that blessing. One way or the other, it has to come. And it must come in the name of Jesus. This shall be your portion in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. You will. You will. When, when, we, were, when, when we were in Dagenham, when we were in Dagenham and God took us to Dagenham and we were supposed to start coming back, because we do things, this church, as if you've been in this church long enough, you know that we do things by prophecy. And, as we're, and, and we knew that it was time for us to come back to, 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 to Becton. And I began to pray. And I, the first thing I said to my, to my wife was, I don't think God wants us to go back to Ellen Wickinson. And that was out of prayer. It came out of, it, it was such a deep thing. I just, it was there in my spirit. My head could not articulate it. I did not know how we were going to do it. We just began to just pray. We just began to pray. We began to pray. We just began to pray. That like God, we're coming back to Becton. In fact, when we first spoke, with the, with, the, with, the, with the leadership and the people of Becton, we, I said to them, I've, I've began to look else. Remember that, that, that conversation we had at, uh, uh, in, in the park? I said, we began to look. No, they said, but pastor, just let's come together in Becton. I said, okay. In, in Ellen Wilkinson. Hallelujah. And so I said, okay, we'll come, we'll come. Because in my head, we're not going back to Ellen Wilkinson. Because that was what was in my spirit. But I didn't understand the natural. So we began to pray. So we had one or two, um, uh, what do you call it, gatherings. Hallelujah. And, when, and, the, and when the final month and Sunday that was supposed to come, Ellen Wickerson was closed. And then this place became open. And then I said, aha. See, that was always, that was always, this, what we're seeing here was always in the spiritual realm. But at the time, we didn't know. We didn't know. We just had an inkling, but we didn't know how it was going to happen. Hallelujah. And there are things concerning your life in the same way. Some things that God reveals to you, you just don't know how they're going to happen. Just pray. Hallelujah. You see, prayer steadies the ship. Steadies your landing. So you don't have too much of a bumpy landing. Because the enemy is always there to obstruct you. To throw things into your path. To mess up your path. To, the pastor, the Bible says, uh, um, the crooked way shall be what made straight. That's why the Bible says, um, the angels will guard you so you don't hit your foot against a. St- All those things are there to put are there from the enemy. He puts stones. He puts obstacles. That is the word Satan. The word Satan is an obstructor, somebody who opposes. And so when things begin to oppose your life, your finances, you understand that there's a, a, a satanic thing going on. And you need to arrest it in Jesus' name. And for some people are so obsessed with Satan, they have no connection with heaven. So I say the balance is 
connect with what heaven is saying and use it against Satan. Don't just bind Satan for bind, binding Satan. You say, you say, what have I done? Why are you troubling me? Are you with me? You need to use prophecy to wage warfare. You need to use the word of God to establish what God wants to do. That is prayer. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's just move on. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit speaks in various ways. A word of knowledge. A, pro a promise. A rima word. A dream. A picture. All of these are linked directly or indirectly with the word of God. And this is how you pray properly and get results. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, let me just say this, that as you're praying and waiting on God, a word will come. Hallelujah. A word came to Samuel. If you read the Bible, God spoke to Samuel and told him about Eli. Thank you, Jesus. And uh, Samuel began to hear God speak. Uh, the word came to Abraham. And Jesus said, solemnly I tell you the truth, the son cannot do anything on his own initiative. This is, Jesus Christ is showing us a model here. He's saying, the way to live as a Christian is don't go on your own initiative. Pick up your initiative from the presence of God. He says, but only what he sees the father doing. For whatever the father does, the son does likewise. So you have to copy the Father. You have to pick up things from what heaven is saying and implement them in your own life. There are things in our hearts that we want to do, but they are contrary to what the Father is saying, even if they are biblical. Hello. Hello. The Bible says, in the fullness of what time. That Moses wanted to do what was biblical, but in a wrong way and in a wrong season. So he, the, the Israelites had to be delivered, but not the way he wanted to do it. It had to be God's way. Look at your neighbor and say, God's way. Hallelujah. God's way, not your way. Some Christians want to do God's job for him. It is not your job to do God's job. Leave God to do his job. You humble yourself and let God speak to your heart concerning your life. And whatever God says to you is going to be good. Hallelujah. One of the greatest lies the devil has told Christians and backsliding Christians is that God is not fun. That if you submit to God's will, you will mess up your life. You will not have a life. And that is not true. Look at anybody say that is not true. Every, think, about it, think about every good and wonderful thing in life. God gave it to us. It's just that the, the, the world knows how to enjoy it better than many Christians. Are you with me? But God gave it to us. And so I'm, all I'm saying is this, that surrender yourself to the will of God, to the purposes of God, and you will begin to see good things happen in your life. This is prayer school. I'm trying to let you know that we, just, we don't pray amiss. Praise the Lord. If you try to download corrupt files onto your mobile phone, it can mess up your phone. Download the proper files. Amen. Hello. Homework. The homework I'm going to give you hallelujah, is I want you to make up your mind this week that you're going to read volumes of the Word of God. I like football. Hello? My team are playing well at the moment. 
we are winning, 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 winning. Hallelujah. I'm not going to mention the name of the team. Hallelujah. You know, you know, hallelujah. Just check whatever is winning. <laughs> and you know my team. Hallelujah. But I've decided to minimize my football for God in this time of praying and fasting. Hallelujah. So, I want you to read more of the word. Download more of the word because more of the word into your mind and into your heart is going to give the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit the ability to speak more to you. The secret to hearing God speak more and those of you that have prophetic voices, those of you who are prophetic, if you want your prophetic thing to be sharper, read the Logos and then you have the Rema. As a minister in, in, in Nigeria, he began to study the word. As he studied the word, his, his, his um, gift of word of knowledge became sharper and more accurate because the word of God is the bowel on, from which God speaks. Hallelujah. So that is your homework. Tap your neighbors. That, say, that is your homework. So parents, please get your children to read some epistles this week. Hallelujah. Tell, tell, tell your children you're reading Ephesians and Philippians and Colossians this week. Hallelujah. So tell, let them read it in a version that they would love. Amen. So tap to people and tell them homework, 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 homework. Did you hear, Pastor? Did you hear homework, 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 homework? Praise the Lord. I'm not going to do an exam next week so you don't come to church. This is between you and God. Life is your exam. Hallelujah. If you do it, it will bless you. You pass. If you don't do it, you will fail. In God's class, it's not like the English system. You don't go automatically to the next class. You will stay there. Let me give you just one little revelation. God told Abraham, the children, my children would, would be in Egypt for 400 years. When we read the New Testament, we find out that they were there for 430 years. Hallelujah. Moses was in Midian for 40 years. The 10 years difference is Moses' fault. Some of you get that tomorrow. I, I personally, this is my own personal revelation. That burning bush was not the first time he was there. But this was the time that Moses took time. When we get to heaven, we'll find out God said, I sent him a um, two-legged lion. He didn't look at it. I sent him this. He didn't look at it. He finally looked at the burning bush. Are, are you with me? God is trying to get your attention. It's time to listen in Jesus' name. So you don't mark time in a place. Step into God's best in your season. Let's bow our heads. I pray for enlargement over you. I pray for blessing over you. I pray that you will hear the voice of God. I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to you. I, he, I pray that you will eavesdrop on what heaven is saying. I pray that you will have a, a sneak preview into your own file. I pray that you will enter into your purpose. Hallelujah. I pray that you will collide with God's perfect will for your May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord anoint you in the name of Jesus. Look at me for a moment. I've just been asked to give you another homework. And it's not homework. How many of us have been on the prayer line? Just raise your hand. Just wave your hand if you have been on the prayer line. 
Um, can you put the um, Zoom thing up on the screen for me? This week, can you, everybody put up their hands? Everybody, just put up your hand. Children, everybody, just if you don't mind, please, just put up, just just raise your right hand. Just raise, your, just raise your hand. In Jesus' name, for as you raise your hand, I pray that you will acknowledge the prayer line and join the prayer line this week in Jesus mighty name. Amen. And so I'd like you to take a picture of this screen and join us on the prayer line either at 6 a.m. in the morning or at 8.30 p.m. in the evening. We pray every day and we share a principle of the word or we just pray as the Holy Spirit leads us and we pray at 8 6 a.m. every day Monday through to Sunday and we pray in the evening at 8 30 p.m. and as you come on the prayer line may God activate and build up your spiritual heart and lives that you may hear what God is saying in Jesus mighty name. So tap three people and tell them go on Zoom.